Hello. Let's finish our hoops. So I'm gonna move my hoop out of this bright orange into a wood hoop. And I'm sorry, it's a little bit shadowy over here. I'm at my desk because it is raining outside. So there is no sun from the outside. I have this really old hoop that I think I got at a secondhand store. Gosh, it's such a good one though. They don't make them like they used to. The colors are not as great, but man, look at it. It's like this perfect circle. Okay. So that's the hoop we're gonna use. And we are going to back it with some fabric. If you have some leftover fabric from whatever you used for the front, you can use that to back it. Or if you have like other fabric, I have like a whole box of like tie dyed <laughs> or ice dyed, I don't know, dyed fabric. So I kind of just pull from that. But anyways, um, if you're using a printed fabric, I would recommend depending on how thick your stitching fabric is, if you put a layer of light gray between your fabric and your backing fabric, then you won't see the backing fabric. I'm not worried because this is just like, it'll make it like a little bit red, but I'm not worried about that. So anyways, I'm only gonna do one layer. So let me, I am very fancy when I cut out fabric. This is what I do. Fits in my hoop. Oh. I just cut a little piece. I don't cut it straight. I mean, look at this edge. It's like really jagged. It's fine. We're gonna trim it. So as long as the hoop fits in it with a little bit around the edges, you're good to go. So um, now, if you don't have a backing fabric, that's 100% totally fine. You don't have to have a backing fabric. If you don't have a backing fabric, then just skip this step. Okay. So what we're going to do, you should have erased your lines by now. If you haven't, um, if you're using a heat erasable, you can use a hot blow dryer and just blow dry over this. Don't like hold it in one spot that will heat things up, can burn things. Um, but just like blow over the top of it slowly um, if you did water soluble, um, soak it and then any spots that kind of stick around, just like rub gently with your finger or like with a baby toothbrush finger works fine. But, um, yeah, I already did a blow dryer on mine. Okay. So what I'm going to do is take it out of here. Now, if you didn't, if you're not going to do a backing fabric and it's in the hoop that you're going to finish in stop right here. Don't go any further. I am putting a backing fabric. So what I'm going to do is put these two fabrics together and then I'll get my new hoop. So the outer hoop goes on top and the inner hoop goes on the bottom on the bottom of both fabrics. Okay. Now, if it's in the hoop that you're gonna finish in and you're not doing a backing fabric, then just make sure that your um, stitching is centered, which is what we're gonna do right now. Um, and then we will finish the backs together. Okay, so once I put mine in, I gently pull the top one first to kind of get it where I want it. I'm gonna get it back to where it was like in the orange hoop because that's my guide. I already had it centered. So once I took it out of that, I can see where it needs to go. So once I have that kind of where I want it, then I'll go in and I tighten the backing fabric first. So I'll just go 
and make sure that there's not any like bubbles or wrinkles back here. And then work on the front after. Okay, so that's nice and smooth. I'm going to tighten my hardware a little bit and then pull this so it's nice and tight. We don't wanna display it with wrinkles. So just working our way around, making sure it's centered and smooth. Okay, take a look at it. Make sure it's where you want it. It's a tiny bit higher over here than it is here, but not enough that I'm gonna worry about it. So I'm going to tighten this some more. I don't have a screw right here. Normally I would use a screwdriver. Where is my screwdriver? Oh, there it is. I would normally use a screwdriver and tighten this, but I don't have one. So if you can't get it tight enough, finger tight, if you have like some pliers, I usually do it like this and just tighten this because I wanna make sure that it stays nice and snug in the hoop. Okay, there we are, done. Just kidding. Um, okay. So what we're gonna do is trim our backing fabric first. I trim it just right down to the hoop. So I make a little notch and then just make sure if you're doing it this way that you're keeping your front fabric off to the side and not cutting it while you're cutting this fabric on the back. Now we've got the backing fabric cut short. It doesn't matter if it's got a little bit extra, whatever. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and cut around the edge of our fabric that we stitched on. I like to keep about an inch to tie it off. It doesn't need to be perfect. We're gonna tie it closed, so. I just like to cut off like the frayed pieces from stitching, whoop. I've lost my scissors before and had to do this with embroidery scissors. Totally works. It does not need to be perfect, I promise. You're not even gonna be able to tell. And plus like, who's looking at the back? Nobody. Okay, so if you're not doing a backing fabric, I should have said unpause, <laughs> um, trim your edge, and now everybody gets to do this part. So now make sure that your surface is clean. I just wiped my desk down yesterday, so it's fine, but you don't wanna put this down and have it get dirty after you've just finished it. So make sure your desk is clean. We are going to use some, did we use green? Yeah, we did. I like to match my backing fabric and my threads so that they like match the front. It's silly, but it's fine. So what I do is I just get a piece and loosely drape it around the edge and make sure that it'll go all the way around. And then you find a needle. Highly recommend doing this with at least six strands. I know some people that use six and double it over so that they have 12. If you're gonna do that, then make sure your loop goes around it twice, but then you'll just pull this all the way to the bottom and tie the two ends together so you have 12 strands. But have at least six, because if you have less, you'll probably break it when you tie this closed. So what we're gonna do is tie a little bit of a knot with a tail on it. So we want a little bit of a tail so that we can pull this closed. So my knot is going right here. And then I like to start at the top and go up and down. This is called a running stitch. Okay. And then we're just gonna do that all the way across. I usually do the up and down in the same motion. So up 
and down. Just take a little chunk and then pull it through. Goodness. Okay. I try to keep them close to the same size, but if some are a little bit bigger and some are a little bit smaller, it's not, it's not gonna be the end of the world. We're just gonna go up, down. All the way across. Across, huh? I mean around, you know what I mean. All the way around. So then when you look on this side, you see these ones. And then when you look on this side, you see the other side. It's just, it's called a running stitch. We're about halfway there. And I like to keep my stitches about two thirds of the way between the hoop and the edge. So. Um, I don't like it too close to the edge because I'm afraid they're going to pull out, but I don't want them too close to the center because then we have some extra floppy thread. So my, I usually go about two thirds of the way from the hoop to the edge, approximately. I'm, I'm not one that's going to measure. So there is also other ways to back a hoop. I personally like this way best so this is the way i teach it i like that there is no glue i don't like to glue on embroidery hoops because i always think what if i need to take it out um so there's other ways to do this you can also get like a piece of felt and do like a blanket stitch anyways if you don't like this way i encourage you to find another way there is tons of different ways to back embroidery hoops this is just my preferred method because it's easy and I don't have to get anything else out. I can just have my thread and my fabric and we're good. So I am getting a little bit tight right here to finish stitching across this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull this a little bit so that I have a little bit more thread to work with. I don't pull it all the way tight because I like to pull some from this end too. But if I just pull it a little bit, then I have a little bit more to work with and I can finish this running stitch. Okay, up, down. I like to go down fairly close together. And then once you're at the end, you can pull your needle off. Um, so now we have our two ends. They're pretty close together, like close enough because we're gonna tie them together. So now what we're gonna do is just pull these two strands and just pull that closed. So we have a cute little back. So what we're gonna do is do just a double knot here. So we're gonna pull this this is why if you're using less than six strands and you pull it tight here, you'll probably break some thread and you're gonna have to restitch it. So I hold on here with my fingers and then, or I have one of my kids hold it. I don't need them to anymore, but in the beginning I did. Okay, that's it. Trim this. So cute. Simple, that's it, you're done. <sighs> Happy fall, y'all. How fun is that? Okay, that's it for me. You guys are so great. Thank you so much for joining in. I can't wait to see your finished hoops. If you are, um, if you have a public account and you tag me, I will share it. Otherwise, I would love for you to just message me and show me your finished hoop. I wanna see them all. I'd love to share them with the group if you're okay with that. So anyways, thank you so much. And I will see you in a couple weeks when we stitch our haunted houses. Bye.